Dearest of all boys, I am sad and out of sorts, Bosie. You must not make scenes with me. They kill me. They wreck the loveliness of life. I cannot see you, so Greek and gracious, distorted with passion. I cannot listen to your curved lips saying hideous things to me. Don't do it. You break my heart. I must see you soon. You are the divine thing I want, the thing of grace and genius. Why are you not here, my dear, my wonderful boy? Ever your own, Oscar. Dear Oscar, I enclose a sonnet which I have called in the Sarum Close. Tired of passion and the love that brings satieties and rest and failing sands of life, I thought to cool my burning hands in this calm twilight of grey gothic things. <laughs> but love has laughed, and spreading swifter wings than my poor pinions, once again with bands of silk and strength, my fainting heart commands. And once again, he plays on passionate strings. But thou, my love, my flower, my jewel, set in a fair setting, help me or I die to bear love's burden. For that load to share is sweet and pleasant. But if lonely, I must love unloved. Tis pain. Shine we, my fair, two neighbour jewels in love's coronet. With love, Bosie. My own boy, your sonnet is quite lovely, and it is a marvel that those red rose-leaf lips of yours should be made no less for the madness of music and song than for the madness of kissing. Your slim, gilt soul walks between passion and poetry. Thy mouth is like a band of scarlet on a tower of ivory. It is like a pomegranate cut with a knife of ivory. The pomegranate flowers that blossom in the gardens of Tyre and are redder than roses are not so red. Why are you alone in London? And when do you go to Salisbury? Do go there to cool your hands in the grey twilight of gothic things, and come here whenever you like. It is a lovely place, and lacks only you. But go to Salisbury first. Always with undying love yours. Oscar My dear Oscar, to see the moment holds a madrigal. To find some cloistered place, some hermitage for free devices, some deliberate cage wherein to keep wild thoughts like birds in thrall. To eat sweet honey and to taste black gall, to fight with form, to wrestle and to rage, till at the last upon the conquered page the shadows of created beauty fall. This is the sonnet. This is all delight of every flower that blows in every spring, and all desire of every desert place. This is the joy that fills a cloudy night when bursting from her misty following, a perfect moon wins to an empty space. With love, Bosie. My own darling boy, I just send you a line to say that I feel that my only hope of again doing beautiful work in art is being with you. It was not so in the old days, but now it is different, and you can really recreate in me that energy and sense of joyous power on which art depends. Everyone is furious with me for going back to you, but they don't understand us. I feel that it is only with you that I can do anything at all. Do remake my ruined life for me. 
and then our friendship and love will have a different meaning to the world. I wish that when we met at Rouen, we had not parted at all. There are such wide abysses now of space and land between us. But we love each other. Good night, dear. Ever yours, Oscar. My dear, darling, beautiful Oscar. I went to the Savoy Hotel with Maurice for two nights, and I was sentimental enough to go down to our old room 123, next to the restaurant where we used to sleep together. I really love you, dear Oscar, far more than any other boy in the world, and shall always be your loving boy wife, or your little bitch, if you prefer it. Alfred. My dearest boy, this is to assure you of my immortal, my eternal love for you. Tomorrow, all will be over. If prison and dishonor be my destiny, think that my love for you and this idea, this still more divine belief, that you love me in return, will sustain me in my unhappiness, and will make me capable, I hope, of bearing my grief most patiently. Since the hope, nay, rather the certainty, of meeting you again in some world is the goal and the encouragement of my present life, <sighs> I must continue to live in this world because of that. Oscar. After long and fruitless waiting, I have determined to write to you myself. As much for your sake as for mine, as I would not like to think that I had passed through two long years of imprisonment without ever having received a single line from you, or any news or message even, except such as gave me pain. If there be in it one single passage that brings tears to your eyes, weep as we weep in prison, where the day no less than the night is set apart for tears. It is the only thing that can save you. You surely must realize that now. You must see now that your incapacity of being alone, your nature so exigent in its persistent claim on the attention and time of others, your lack of any power of sustained intellectual concentration, the unfortunate accident, for I like to think it was no more, that you had not been able to acquire the Oxford temper in intellectual matters. Never, I mean, been one who could play gracefully with ideas, but had arrived at violence of opinion merely. That all these things, combined with the fact that your desire and your interests were in life, not in art, were as destructive to your own progress in culture as they were to my work as an artist. As far as I can make out, I ended my friendship with you every three months regularly, and each time that I did so you managed by means of entreaties 
telegrams, letters, the interposition of your friends, the interposition of mine, and the like, to induce me to allow you back. How far I am away from the true temper of soul, this letter in its changing, uncertain moods, its scorn and bitterness, its aspirations and its failures to realize those aspirations, shows you quite clearly. But do not forget in what a terrible school I am setting at my task. And incomplete, imperfect as I am, yet from me you may have still much to gain. You came to me to learn the pleasure of life and the pleasure of art. Perhaps I am chosen to teach you something much more wonderful. The meaning of sorrow and its beauty. Your affectionate friend, Oscar Wilde. Thank <laughs> you.